will be, you'll have NDP leader John Horgan, who will soon become Premier John Horgan. The last time we were here at Government House was when Horgan arrived to speak to Lieutenant Governor Judith Guichon, and in that meeting, he was asked to govern British Columbia. Now, here we are, nearly three weeks later, with a swearing in and the beginning of a new era in BC political history. So just let me uh, set the stage for you here. If you're just tuning in, I'm Richard Zussman, the BC legislative reporter, or sorry, the legislative reporter for the CBC for British Columbia. Uh, you are watching the swearing in for uh, premier designate, about to be premier John Horgan. So let me set the stage for you here. Uh, we are going to watch unfold on stage. First, uh, the cabinet will enter. The formal names have not been introduced yet, but we do see here who is not in cabinet. Uh, so there are a number of people uh, who have been long serving uh, MLAs who are not in cabinet, including Jennifer Rice, uh, Jay Gr Nick Simon, Spencer Chandra Herbert, new MLAs Ravi Callan, Gary Bag, Ronna Ray Leonard, not in cabinet. Uh, but we will soon unveil the entire list of who is in cabinet. Uh, and then what will happen is John Horgan will come out with his cabinet and he will be sworn in first as the next Premier of British Columbia, the 36th Premier of British Columbia. This is the first time in BC's history that there's been a legislative session, the 41st session, where there will be two Premiers. So as of today, John Horgan is Premier, Christy Clark is out as Premier, and so uh, what will happen is Horgan will be sworn in and then each minister will be sworn in one by one and that will unfold over the next hour. So again, Richard Zussman here. I will follow you through the next hour as we work our way through the swear again. Uh, my friend, uh, Mary Griffin from Czech Television just slipped me a note with all the notables who are here. So thanks, Mary. We have Mike Harcourt, former premiers here, Gregor Robertson, the Vancouver mayor, Murray Rankin, the MP for Victoria, Dan Miller, who's a former premier, the interim premier, uh, after Glenn Clark resigned. Also important to note that John Horgan was his chief of staff. So Mary, thanks for that. And so, uh, and Andrew Weaver's also here, uh, just standing in front of me. I know you're looking at the front where all the action will take place. I'm looking at the back of the room here. So Andrew Weaver, who ultimately made this possible, is here alongside Adam Olson, one of the green MLAs. Uh, former MLAs, Maureen Karagiannis, Kathy Corrigan are here. This truly is a major celebration for the NDP. They didn't get a chance to celebrate after the election because they didn't win the most seats and they didn't get the most votes. But now we're here two and a half months later and they're celebrating as the government of British Columbia. So a lot to unfold over the next hour here. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, I'm Richard Zussman from the CBC. I will be narrating throughout this, but a lot of the action will be taking place on the stage you can see there. And, I will let uh, you hear what's happening in the room uh, once we get the MC that comes up here uh, and starts the ceremonies. Uh, you'll hear from Jeremy Brownrich. He's the principal secretary for the Lieutenant Governor Judith Guichon. You also see and hear from Lieutenant Governor Judith Guichon. She will be the one in charge of doing the swearing in uh, for Premier designate, soon to be Premier John Horgan. And then as I mentioned, we'll see all the cabinet ministers after that. A lot of media interest clearly here today, here uh, at Government House. Uh, because of this uh, switchover of government, uh, we are packed on the side here. And if uh, it's hard, uh, we can't move the camera, but the space I'm standing in now is about uh, one foot by two feet uh, jammed amongst reporters. So at times you will hear action going on in and around me as you know, lots of news organizations are getting prepared uh, for this moment here that's about to unfold in front of us. So. I know it's almost two o'clock. It looks like we are running late, uh, but that is uh, part of uh, 
I guess the challenge is here. Now the NDP is in government. We'll see if they can stick to getting on time and delivering their promises. Uh, one thing I can tell you is that they are delivering on one promise. I can't tell you who, but there is a minister of mental health and addictions. So that was a commitment from the NDP that there would be a new minister responsible to help deal with the fentanyl crisis and they have honored that commitment. I'm not sure what you can see up front, but there was a woman standing up there in blue who I think would have been right in the shot there. I'm not sure. That's uh, Ellie Horgan, John Horgan's wife. I'm going on memory here. I think of 28 years. They've been together since uh, the second day of uh, university at uh, Trent University. Uh, and uh, they are, have two sonnies. Uh, based on who's sitting beside uh, Ellie Horgan, I think one of the sons uh, may be here, but again, I don't know. I'm just observing what we see in the room here. Again, if uh, you're just uh, tuning into the live stream, I'm Richard Zussman, legislative reporter for the CBC. I will be quiet very soon and let you really enjoy what's going on in the room, but for now, I'm just trying to get us through to the beginning of the ceremony. Uh, Don Davies, uh, the M uh, MP in Vancouver, uh, also here alongside Murray Rankin, his uh, federal colleague. Uh, they're chatting now with some of the MLAs who didn't make it into cabinet. If you're an expert in NDP politics, let me read to you who's not in cabinet, and then you can surmise who is in cabinet. So, who's not in cabinet, I see here Rick Lumack, Bob Deeth, Leonard Crow, Jen Rice, Mabel Elmore, Spencer Chandra Herbert, Ronna Ray Leonard, Ravi Callan, Nick Simons, and now it's getting a little bit harder for me. So there are some who I haven't been able to see. Gary Begg is also not in cabinet, a new MLA from Surrey. Raj Chohan, not in cabinet. So based on uh, my best predictions here, I would assume that either Leonard Krobe or Raj Chohan will become speaker and the other one will become deputy speaker. Part of the reason why they are not in cabinet today. Ann Kang, also not in cabinet. I'm not sure if I said Jagra Brada. But those are the people who are not in cabinet. So if you have your checklist in front of you, you can surmise from that who will be in cabinet. Because all I can see, and Janet Routledge and Doug Routley, Mitzi Dean. I think I have them all now. Those are the NDP MLAs who are here, who are not members of cabinet, as the members of cabinet are in a closed uh, setting right now as as they get prepared uh, to be introduced as the new cabinet. 36th Premier of British Columbia, John Horgan, about to be sworn in here at Government House. I'm Richard Zussman. Thank you for joining us for this special live stream on the CBC Facebook page. I will also try to tweet along, uh, and uh, Tamara, who's been uh, moderating this, will also be able to fill in the gaps here because we will know who the cabinet ministers are before you see them on the live stream. So. I will, I will start talking a little bit during some of the lulls on who the cabinet ministers are. We'll also fill that in the comment section. Uh, and also, if there's any questions throughout the next hour that you have, just put them down in the comment section there, uh, and I will try my best to get to them uh, when we have a, a chance here. So we have a couple questions here. Nick Simons is not in cabinet. He is one of the people I mentioned. Uh, Nick, a long-serving MLA, uh, one of the groups, uh, one of those, I think, from the class of 2005. Uh, Doug Routley, I think, also from the class of 2005. Uh, and neither of them are in cabinet. Uh, I can unveil a little bit later what roles these MLAs will be filling. We have that on embargo. But for now, all I can tell you is what's in front of me. And I can see that Nick Simons is not in cabinet because he is here uh, in, the, uh, in this main ballroom of Government House of Victoria. I also see across here Jeff Meggs, Chief of Staff for Premier John Horgan, former City Councilor, uh, his old boss, <laughs> the Mayor of Vancouver, Gregor Robertson, also here. He's now chatting with Maureen Kirigianis, the former um, MLA uh, from Esquimalt Machosa. Thank you for joining us again, Richard Zussman. You won't have to hear much of my voice. It is standing room only. You can hear, no doubt, the buzz in this room. Uh, it is standing room only. There are probably about 60 people standing in the back, about another 40 to 50 lined 
up and around uh, at the main ballroom here on the next upper floor. Uh, these are people who were invited by the NDP, uh, but a lot of them invited uh, as friends and family of, of the new uh, members of, of the cabinet as well as the new MLAs. This is the opportunity the NDP did not have to celebrate on election night, uh, May 9th, uh, because of what's unfolded over the last two and a half months. It's also very strange, I mentioned this earlier, we are still in the 41st session of the legislature, and for the first time ever, there are two separate governments in one session. The last time there was a minority government in BC, 1952, uh, W.A.C. Bennett uh, was defeated a confidence vote, but then there was an election called, and he won a majority after that. This scenario was much, much different. Uh, the drama, as you've been following along in this province over the last few months, uh, Intense is a word for it, uh, especially after the meeting a few weeks ago here at Government House um, where uh, Lieutenant Governor Judith Gishon did ask uh, John Horgan to become the next Premier of British Columbia. I'm Richard Zussman. Thank you so much for joining us for this live stream of uh, the swearing in. And here is the new cabinet. Uh, John Horgan has tweeted it out. So I was a little bit slow here, but I will tell you now who's in cabinet because John Horgan has done it. So the cabinet ministers are Scott Fraser, George Heyman, Shane Simpson, Lana Popham, Selena Robinson, Ginny Sims, Judy Darcy, Lisa Bear, Melanie Mark, Doug Donaldson, Rob Fleming, George Chow, Katrina Chen, Adrian Dix, Katrina Conroy, Bruce Ralston, David Eby, Mike Farnworth, Harry Baines, Claire Trevina, and Judy Darcy. I can't yet tell you what positions they have in cabinet, but I will tell you that Melanie Mark has become the first First Nations woman to serve in cabinet in British Columbia's history. There are also many important notes here in terms of regional breakdown. There are three cabinet ministers from outside of either Vancouver Island or Metro Vancouver. They include Doug Donaldson, Katrina Conroy, and Michelle Mungall. That is a substantial change uh, from the Liberal cabinet, which included basically half. But here's the really important point to note. This is the first gender balanced cabinet in BC's history. So the women in cabinet, count with me here. Claire Churvina, one. Carol James, two. Lana Popham, three. Michelle Mungall, four. Whoa, Selena whoa. Robinson, five. Hello. Ginny Hello. Sims, six. Katrina Check. Conroy, seven. There we go. Judy Darcy, Good eight. afternoon, everybody. Uh, Katrina Chen, nine. Lisa Bear, All ten. Right. And Melody oh. Mark, eleven. That's half of your cabinet. I will let Jeremy Brown I have Brown to say Rich this is the best crowd we've here. ever had, so thanks for coming. <clears throat> first of all, First of all, uh, how about a nice round of applause for the fantastic Aaron Sharp trio, weren't they lovely? And, we, and of course we had Brad Prevederos uh, out in the portico, another lovely addition to this afternoon. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Government House. My name is Jeremy Brownridge and I'm Private Secretary to Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia. On behalf of Her Honour, the Honourable Judith Gishon, Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia, welcome to this ceremony, during which the Premier and members of Executive Council will be formally installed in office. Well, I might never leave this stage, thank you. But before we begin, ladies and gentlemen, if I could kindly request that you switch your phones off or put them on silent, at least so they don't ring. Thank you so much. Today's proceedings, of course, are rich in the tradition of our constitutional monarchy. The primary responsibility of any Lieutenant Governor is to ensure that there's always a government in office and that the basic principles of responsible governance, one that has the vote of the majority of MLAs, are respected. However, those elected to govern do not possess absolute authority because they are accountable in the exercise of their offices to the people as embodied in the institution of the Crown. As representative of the Queen, the Lieutenant Governor will now install the new government. Firstly, Her Honour will administer the oaths of allegiance, of office and of confidentiality to the Premier-designate Horrigan and to become the First Minister, of course, Premier of British Columbia and the President of Executive Council. <laughs> now, 
Then there's more. <laughs> Upon Premier Horrigan's recommendation, Her Honour will install the members selected for the Executive Council by administering the same oaths simultaneously, after which Premier Horgan will announce their respective portfolios. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, would you please rise for the arrival of Minister's Designate, Premier Designate, and the Lieutenant Governor. So I know you're having a hard time seeing here because of the crowd standing, but we do know who's in Cabinet. So let me tell you once again, and that's based on John Horgan himself tweeting out a picture of the Cabinet. Uh, he's being led in here by First Nations drummers. You can't see them because of the crowd here, but this is part of the logistical challenges with uh, a new government coming in. They've never done this before, so a, lot of, a little bit of disorganization in terms of uh, getting things set so the media can uh, capture this moment, because obviously at this point uh, we're not able to show it to you, but you'll just have to listen because where I'm standing here I can see uh, some First Nations uh, drummers arriving he here uh, in Government House. And we apologize that you can't see this. Uh, there were some challenges with getting things set up uh, here today, so uh, there weren't enough adequate spots set up on risers. So we're doing the best we can to, to show you what's unfolding in the front uh, here at Government House. So I'm just going to take a look here at some of the questions. Spencer Chandra Herbert is not in cabinet. Uh, we're also on YouTube and Periscope uh, for those. Uh, thank you for joining us through those uh, social media platforms. Carrie May Gerber asks, are the Green Party members in attendance? They are. Adam Olson just asked me whether I would do this through the whole uh, ceremony. I think he's annoyed at my voice already. comes the new cabinet. Melanie Mark, Adrian Dix, Katrina Chen, Rob Fleming, Lana Popham, George Heyman, Selena Robinson, George Chow, Ginny Sims, the former NDP MP is in cabinet, Doug Donaldson, Katrina Conroy, Scott Fraser, Judy Darcy, Bruce Rolston, Michelle Mungall, Harry Baines, Lisa Bear, Mike Farnworth, 
Claire Trevena, Shane Simpson, Carol James. That is your cabinet, David Eby. We also have, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm gonna guess, the tallest cabinet minister of all time, David Eby, at six foot seven, and Selena Robinson at four foot 11, could be the shortest cabinet minister in British Columbia's history. We'll have to check on that for sure. But it will be, it's always interesting to walk, watch the two of them walk beside each other down the hallways. So I know there's been some questions here in terms of Green Party members in attendance. They are. Adam Olson and Andrew Weaver are standing about two feet from me here. Adam Olson asked me if I would be talking through the whole thing. I told him uh, I would try my best to let this moment breathe. So I'll let you listen a little bit here to the First Nations drummers again. Ladies and gentlemen, the so Mock Cassim oh, traditional me... dancers. <laughs> and, while, and while we're still standing, ladies and gentlemen, I will invite Alan Faraby to lead us in the national anthem, accompanied by Carl Rosing on the piano. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. 
And I'm now delighted to call upon the Lach Kassin traditional Tsimshian dancers again to perform a welcome song for us. So you can see there Lieutenant Governor Judith Gishaw in red beside Premier Designate John Horgan. The NDP cabinet about to be sworn in here uh, and officially John Horgan will become Premier of British Columbia. But we can now tell you what jobs ministers have. The Minister of Advanced Education, Skills and Training is Melanie Mark. The Minister of Agriculture, Lana Popham. The Attorney General, David Eady. The Minister of Children and Family Development is Katrina Conroy. The Minister of State for Child Care is Katrina Chen. The Minister of Citizen Services is Ginny Sims. The Minister of Education is Rob Fleming. The Minister of Energy, Mines and Petroleum Resources is Michelle Mungall. The Minister of Environment and Climate Change is George Heyman. The Minister of Finance and the Deputy Premier is Carol James. The Minister of Forest, Lands, Natural Resource Operation and Rural Development is Doug Donaldson. Get that printed on a business card. The Minister of Health is Adrian Dix. The Minister of Indigenous Relations is Scott Fraser. The Minister of Jobs, Trade and Technology is Bruce Ralston. The Minister of State for Trade is George Chow. The Minister of Labor is Harry Baines. The Minister of Mental Health and Addictions is Judy Darcy. The Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Selena Robinson. Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General, Mike Farnworth. The Minister of Social Development and Poverty Reduction is Shane Simpson. The Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture is Lisa Mayer. And the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure is Claire Trevena. It's very loud in here, I know. I can repeat that again very soon. But that is your cabinet. You can also follow along on my social media channels where I've just tweeted out the entire list of cabinet. Traditional. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lach Hussein traditional Tsimshian dancers. I'm now honored to call upon El Elder Thalamia from the Souk Nation and Chief Hayakwacha, also of Souk Nation, to give the blessing this afternoon.
took the animals off, ma'am. Hides with the Nazi square. Hides with the mug square. Mug wet. CM the CAA. CM the Suma. CM so fine. Hides with the Thomas mug and pay. So so fine. The G wine so fine. Sits us in the wire. Scream at all. Air at all. Wall at all to not quail. Do mug square. Aunt was this is all swallowing, not the much swallowing. Creator, great spirit, thank you as we gather together today for this ceremony to acknowledge and bring in our new leader, John Horgan, to be our 36th Premier of British Columbia. Along with our new Democratic Party members, our new cabinet. We also acknowledge and thank Green Party leader Andrew Weaver and Green Party members. We acknowledge and thank Honorable Lieutenant Governor Julie Suchon on this historical day in the history of British Columbia. We acknowledge and say thank you to each one who has supported you, John to each one who stand by you to walk with you into tomorrow with unwavering support. Creator Great Spirit, as we move forward, we acknowledge and say thank you for blessing each day of family, of friends, of mentors, of elders, of our ancestors. The beauty and bounty of Mother Earth in her mountains, oceans, rivers, streams, creatures of our land, sea, and sky, and all nations of yellow, black, red, and white. Creator, Great Spirit, we say thank you to this new government working together with one mind, one spirit, for the good of our people of British Columbia to live in harmony and in peace, looking after Mother Earth who looks after us and ensures the future of our children now and those to come behind us. Today, we also pray for the communities of the interior. We thank the firemen the armed forces, the pilots, the RCMP, the volunteers for their courageous work to put out the fires. Bless each one and keep each one safe. Bless you, John, and your new government. So now next will be the official swearing in of John Horgan as the 36th Thank you so very much, uh, uh, Elder Kalamia, Chief Hayakwacha. This is Jeremy Brownridge. Ladies and gentlemen, Principal please Secretary be seated. To the Lieutenant Governor. We had a question with David Eby's height. I think he is the tallest minister in BC. I'm now history. delighted six to six call seven, upon her honor, the Honorable so Judith Kishan, Lieutenant Governor of British BC's Columbia, history, to give her remarks, Your Honor. We'll have to check with the historians on that one, but. That's my best sense. Mr. John Horgan, Premier Designate, Ministers Designate, we won't have to use that term much longer. <laughs> <laughs> members of Parliament, members of the Legislative Assembly, leaders of uniformed services, and honored veterans, Chief High Choice. Kwacha and Elder Thale Dalamaya of the Sioux First Nations, mayors, councillors, and regional representatives, families, and friends. Welcome to Government House, the ceremonial home of all British Columbians for this very special swearing-in ceremony. As we begin this important ritual, it is crucial to acknowledge with respect the ancient history, 
the wisdom, the culture, and the protocols of the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations of the Lekongwen First Peoples on whose traditional territory we gather. Thank you also to the Timian dancers who traveled here today for getting us started in a good way. This office is charged with maintaining the uninterrupted practice of our parliamentary democracy in British Columbia. The first order of business for any governor general, territorial commissioner, or lieutenant governor is to guarantee the continuance of demo democratically elected government. Today's swearing in ceremony is consistent with those constitutional requirements of this office. There are few more important days in the life of a government than the one in which a leader is appointed, choices are made, and trust is placed in individuals who now assume responsibility for leadership. Many of you are swearing ministerial oaths for the first time, and this day will remain pivotal as you take up new duties and assume the weight of office. For those of you who have previous experience, your colleagues will no doubt turn to you for guidance. So the joke you, here, if you didn't hear, it was about Mike Farnworth. The responsibility the of assuming this public tr in trust Clark's cabinet, and is of paramount of importance. He's turning bright red 2017 up continues to be a significant year across this province, this nation, this province, all across Canada, as we commemorate our sesquicentennial. I won't make you spell it. I have taken advantage of this occasion to talk to students throughout the province about the modern history of our nation. As we look around the world, we can appreciate our great good fortune to be a nation born mainly of conversation rather than confrontation. We have some black marks and grave injustices in our history, but this is a year to work at reconciliation. Because we are a nation that progresses through discussion we have been growing in understanding, in accommodating and becoming ever more inclusive and diverse. We continue to learn, to grow, to respect, and to value one another. But this year, we must take reconciliation one step further. Rather than talking, let's make conscious effort to move to reconciliation, the work of moving forward together. As we see the tragic losses being inflicted in so many areas of the province by floods, followed by unparalleled wild wildfires, we are ever more cognizant of the need to work jointly and to learn from one another as we discover the very best ways to adjust to changing climate conditions. I know that the people of British Columbia are resilient and will continue to support one another as we work together to recover and to restore our exceptional bounty and our unique biological diversity for future generations. As you assume ministerial responsibilities this afternoon, you can be sure, assured that all our fellow citizens are watching you closely, trusting you to apply Canadian values and principles to your work with a sincere hope that you will use all the expertise at your command to assure an ever more civil society within this blessed province. I believe with the stability provided by the Crown, our Constitution will be well protected and this peace will provide the environment in which our sacred land may continue to flourish. As Ministers of the Crown, you are charged with doing your part as legislators in pursuit of peace, order and good government. On behalf of Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, I offer each of you congratulations and good wishes and all the very best of wishes on behalf of those you are sworn to serve. Heichka, merci, thank you.
Thank you very much, Your Honour. I would now request that you administer the oaths to the Premier-designate, the 36th Premier of British Columbia. Judith Gishon, in my capacity as Lieutenant Governor of the Province of British Columbia, do hereby administer the oaths of allegiance, office, and confidentiality to you as a member of the Executive Council in this Her Majesty's Province of British Columbia. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me, including your given names and surname. I, I John Joseph Horgan, swear that I will be faithful swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Queen of Canada Queen of Canada her heirs and successors her heirs and successors so help me God so help me God I swear I swear and now the oath of office I I John Joseph Morgan <laughs> Swear that I will serve. Swear that I will serve. Her Majesty. Her Majesty. Duly and faithfully. Duly and faithfully. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. Fulfill the responsibilities. Fulfill the responsibilities. And trust granted to me. And trust granted to me. As a member of the Executive Council of British Columbia. As a member of the Executive Council of British Columbia. I swear. I swear. Now the oath of confidentiality. I, I, John Joseph Horgan. <laughs> He's a quick learner. <laughs> swear that I will keep confidential. Swear that I will keep confidential. All matters. All matters. Dealt with. Dealt with. In the executive council. In the executive council. And I will not disclose. And I will not disclose. Any of the same any of the same to any person to any person other than a member of the executive council other than a member of the executive council except as authorized by it except as authorized by it or as required or as required in the lawful discharge of my duties in the lawful discharge of my duties as a member of the executive council as a member of the executive council now is this the correct one i <laughs> no, you, no, you say that. Oh, okay. I, it, I thought I had a special one for him. <laughs> okay. I hereby declare you duly sworn and appointed President of the Executive Council and Pre Premier of British <laughs> So 
So we have a new Premier of British Columbia, the 36th Premier of British Columbia, John Horgan. I was just up at the front there, and you can see the tears in Horgan's eyes as he was sworn in as the Premier of BC. So what will ha happen now is he will sign into the <laughs> official book. As you heard there, he uh, took the oath of office right that here. officially makes and him the Premier yeah. of British yeah. Columbia. Oh, you right heard the right ruckus right cheers right here. here. Uh, this is the first Vancouver Island uh, Premier since Dave Barrett, <laughs> also an NDP Premier. So both Guichon and Horgan will sign into the book of office there. And I do apologize for speaking over Lieutenant Governor Judith Guichon earlier. Okay. Okay, now it's official. Now it's official. So now what will happen is each minister will be sworn in. We've posted the list on our website and also in the comment section, so you should have a pretty good sense of who you're going to see going Very up Very good. Here. Thank you, Your Honour. Ladies and gentlemen, as you're aware, appointments to the Executive Council are made by Her Honour upon the advice of the Premier. This afternoon, Her Honour will now administer the oaths of allegiance, of office and confidentiality simultaneously to the Cabinet. capacity as Lieutenant Governor of the Province of British Columbia do hereby administer the oaths of allegiance, office and confidentiality to you as a member of the Executive Council in this Her Majesty's Province of British Columbia. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me, including your given names and surname. With oath of allegiance. I. I. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Swear that I will be faithful. Swear that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. To Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Queen of Canada. Queen of Canada. Her heirs and successors. Her heirs and successors. So help me God. So help me God. I swear. And now the oath of office. I, 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 I <laughs> swear that I will serve Her Majesty. Swear that I will serve Her Majesty. Duly and faithfully. Duly and faithfully. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. Fulfill the responsibilities. Fulfill the responsibilities. And trust granted to me. And trust granted to me. As a member. Of the Executive Council of British Columbia. Of the Executive Council of British Columbia. I swear. I swear. I swear. And now the oath of confidentiality. I, 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 swear, that I swear, that swear that I will keep confidential. Swear that I will keep confidential. All matters dealt with. All matters dealt with. In the Executive Council. In the Executive Council. And I will not disclose. And I will not disclose. Any of, the same, any of the same to any person, to any person other than a member of the Executive Council, except as authorized by it, or as required in the lawful discharge of my duties as a member of the Executive Council. I swear. I hereby declare you duly sworn as members of the Executive Council of the Government of British Columbia. So that makes it official in terms of the cabinet. Uh, we will now find out the portfolios here, or at least the people here who aren't watching the Facebook live feed or checking out social media will find out for the first time who the cabinet ministers are. Uh, I have a few questions here I'd like to handle. Uh, I now Jasmine invite asks, what is Premier Horgan to so announce. <laughs>
the portfolios of each the of the ministers. The book of record in terms of swearing in all cabinet ministers uh, and the premier as well. Hey. <laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> Melanie Mark, Minister of Advanced Education, Skills and Training. Melanie Mark becomes the first First Nations woman to ever serve in cabinet in British Columbia's history. The member of the legislature for Vancouver, Mount Pleasant, won in a by-election in 2016 and was re-elected by one of the largest margins in the province uh, on the, in the May 9th election. Adrian Dix, Minister of Health. Big applause for the former NDP leader, who was the leader during the 2013 election. Some redemption for Dix uh, as he goes into cabinet as the Minister of Health, who was a staunch critic of health uh, in the past. <laughs> Katrina Chen, Minister of State for Child Care. Katrina Chen beats Steve Dolly and Bernadette Lohi. She is one, one of three first-time MLAs in Cabinet. The former school board trustee in Burnaby goes into Cabinet for Premier John Horgan. Rob Fleming, Minister of Education. Local MLA Rob Fleming for Victoria Swan Lake. He was the education critic, now he's the education minister. Obviously a lot of hard work on his plate right away here as the school year is starting in September. Lana Popham, Minister of Agriculture. Another one of the ministers from the Capital Regional District, she represents a riding in Saanich. Popham, fairly well known in this community, giving the lieutenant governor a big hug. Lana Popham was the critic of agriculture. There were criticisms about whether Popham would even get into cabinet, considering she was one of the major players in the ouster of Carol James when she was leader, but Popham has mended those fences, and now she goes into cabinet as the agriculture minister. Again, not a lot of MLAs for the NDP representing ridings in which agriculture is a priority, but Popham's in Sandwich does, and so she goes into cabinet today. George Heyman, Minister of Environment and Climate Change Strategy. Longtime environmentalist George Heyman goes into cabinet. He is the MLA for Vancouver Fairview. He first was elected in 2013. Uh, also former head of the BCGU, so a name that many people will be familiar with. Heyman will be seen as one of the sort of star stalwarts in this cabinet. Uh, one of many from Vancouver, including David Eby, a EB, Adrian Dix, Melanie Mark, uh, George Chow, Shane Simpson, who are all representing ridings in the city of Vancouver. Selena Robinson, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. The former Coquitlam City Councilor, and now two-term MLA goes in the cabinet, Selena Robinson. Uh, is well known as a star here in Victoria and a rising political star on the provincial scene. So Robinson enters for, uh, Horgan's um, cabinet as the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing and clearly a lot of work right away for Robinson considering the ongoing affordability crisis. George Chow, Minister of State for Trade. Former Vancouver City Councilor George Chow goes in the cabinet. The MLA for Vancouver Fraser View, again one of three new MLAs that go directly into cabinet. He is a former colleague and friend to Jeff Meggs, the now Chief of Staff for Premier John Horgan. And Chow, the only Chinese member of Horgan's new cabinet. Sorry, Katrina Chen as well. So. Ginny Sims, Minister of Citizen Services. Again, a familiar name for many, Ginny Sims, a former head of the BCTF, also a former federal cabinet minister. 
sorry, Katrina Chen is Taiwanese. So Chen, the only Taiwanese member of cabinet, George Chow, the only Chinese member of cabinet. Both of them newly elected MLAs go straight into cabinet. Jenny Sims, uh, one in Surrey, uh, one of the star recruits for Horgan and the NDP. Uh, heading into this election, she was able to win that seat, which many saw as a swing riding. Uh, and now she's rewarded for it uh, with a position here in cabinet. Sims is the Minister of Citizens Services. That's a new portfolio. So we'll have to wait to find out a little bit more about what that job will do. Doug Donaldson, Minister of Forest, Lands, Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development. <laughs> Doug Donaldson gets probably immediately the toughest portfolio. He will be in charge of the province's response to the ongoing fires in the interior. One of four MLAs in the NDP caucus from outside of Metro Vancouver or Vancouver Island. The MLA for Stikine, uh will be working very closely with Premier Horgan on the province's response uh, to the ongoing fire situation in the interior. Katrina Conroy, Minister for Children and Family Development. This is always considered one of those tough posts. Katrina Conroy becomes the Minister of Children and Family Development. Again, one of the four MLAs from outside of Metro Vancouver or Vancouver Island, representing the riding of Kootenay West, a longtime MLA. Conroy goes into Horgan's cabinet in what's historically has been a tough job. But we've heard from representatives of children and youth that it becomes an easier job if they can work closely together. A lot of criticisms about previous minister Stephanie Kadir not working with the children's rep. We'll see how Katrina Conroy takes on this tough job. Scott Fraser, Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Big jump for Scott Fraser there and represents the riding of uh, Port Alberni Pacific Rim. He becomes a minister. He was the whip for the NDP, so somebody else will have to fill that role now. I'm sure it's in my notes here somewhere who that's going to be. That's one of the toughest jobs, considering every vote matters now in the legislature. There will be 44 Greens NDP and 43 Liberals. <laughs> Fraser goes into cabinet as the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Judy Darcy, Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. John Horgan can already check one thing off his list in terms of promises kept. The promise was made during the election to create a new minister's job in which Judy Darcy fills, and that is going to be the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, and the big challenge here will be dealing with the ongoing fentanyl crisis. Darcy was the longtime health critic for the NDP and the former head of the hospital's employees. Bruce here. Ralston, Minister of Jobs, Trade and Technology. Surrey Wally MLA, Bruce Ralston goes into cabinet. He was the finance critic previously, also most recently the critic for energy. Ralston is considering one of those steady hands for Horgan and will be uh, continue to be that way for Horgan in cabinet. Michelle Mongal, Minister of Energy, Mines and Petroleum Resources. Michelle Mungall goes in from Nelson Preston, one of the four from outside of Vancouver Island and Metro Vancouver, uh, one of three cabinet ministers. And both Oregon and Mungall, big uh, Star Trek fans. So that was some sort of Star Trek. Harry Baines, Minister of Labor. There between Mungall and Oregon. <laughs> Harry Baines, MLA for Surrey. He goes into cabinet here, Minister of Labor. Bain's a longtime member of the NDP caucus. And one of two ahead of myself Canadian here. members. Uh, Lisa Baer, Minister of, of Tourism, Canada. Arts and Culture. Lisa Baer rounds out the three new MLAs who go directly into cabinet. Baer pulling off a big victory in Maple Ridge, uh, Clinton Meadows.
Over Dave Bing, she'll become the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Sports has been taken out of uh, the portfolio that was historically uh, sports uh, community uh, and cultural development, and sport has gone to Ravi Callan, who becomes <laughs> Parliamentary Secretary for Sports and Mike Farnworth, Tourism. Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General. Big job for Mike Farnworth here, Public Safety Solicitor General, and I don't have it in front of me, but the assumption has always been that Farnworth will also continue as House Leader for the NDP, which is a hugely substantial job. Again, I don't have it in front of me, but the assumption before today was that he was going to become House Leader as well. Uh, he's long wanted to be Public Safety Minister. He has served as the critic. I mentioned earlier, Farnworth is the only Cabinet Minister who has previous Cabinet experience, having served in Glenn Clark's Cabinet. Minister, oh, pardon me, Claire Trevanna. <laughs> Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. So we're just getting news in David Eby's portfolio. The Attorney General will also be BCUC, Liquor, Gambling, Gaming, and ICBC. Uh, some of those have been pretty substantial, hot button issues. Uh, as we continue to get more information about this. Uh, there have been some questions to me about mandate letters. We have not seen anything on mandate letters yet, uh, and we're not sure if we will. Shane Simpson, Minister of Social Development and Poverty Reduction. So Shane Simpson's in, I'm sorry, I missed Claire Trevena there. I was zoned out for a minute. So Claire Trevena is the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, uh, serving as one of the, uh, oh, I think it's six MLA, six, six ministers from Vancouver Island, Popham, Fleming, Horgan, Trevena, Fraser. Carol James, and I want to, is yellow Minister of Finance right and Deputy saying, Premier. There's another one. There's not, Carol James is one of them, though, and she gets the biggest cheer, the former leader. Just have a listen to that. Former leader Carol James, Minister of Finance and Deputy Premier. This is the key job in Horgan's cabinet. Uh, he stood by her when she was leader and others were trying to throw her out and now she is rewarded, but also Settle rewarded now. for the hard work that she's done over the years representing David Eby, Attorney General. And now. Here's another star for the NDP. David Eby will be Attorney General. Many thought that he could have been the leader before John Horgan became leader, but he decided not to pursue that opportunity. Now will be a key member of Horgan's cabinet. <laughs> so what's happening now is there will be a special... Your Honor, I now request the Attorney General to receive from you, on behalf of the Crown, the Great Seal of British Columbia. The seal, my apologies, not a stamp, a seal. So this is the official seal as the head of the judicial system. Uh, here in British Columbia. Evie also carries additional roles in terms of the functionality, the, the links between the province's political system and its legal system, and Evie will be that connection. Long history in the legal system, a lawyer himself, former head of the BC Civil Liberties Association. The province of British Columbia. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, our new Premier, Premier Horgan and the Executive Council. So the NDP promised to get this wrapped up by 3 o'clock and they have, so another promise delivered by the NDP. That is your cabinet. Thank you for joining us. Uh, John Horgan will now be heading downstairs to do a press conference. Uh, we will attempt to take that live, but we're not sure about how the technology will work. He's actually doing it outside, so we're hoping that that means we'll have a better ability to actually bring that to you live. Uh, and you'll hear some questions to the new Premier, John Horgan. 
Uh, I, I may have a minute here to take some questions. It is, it is now my distinct pleasure, and I get to be the first one, it's already the second time now, to introduce our new Premier to deliver his remarks. Also, we're not done here, so we will now hear from Premier John Horgan. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Shimshan Dancers, uh, Chief Planis, Shirley from Souk Nation, thank you so much for joining us here on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people. Making a little history today, and I'm excited to be here with 11 men and 11 women representing the Executive Council of British Columbia. As we gather, of course, we're mindful of the tens of thousands of British Columbians who have been forced from their homes and the thousands who are fighting fires and the many more who are opening their hearts and their homes to those who have been displaced by a natural catastrophe which is increasing with regularity here in our interior and in our forests. But Canadians come together in times like this and it's heartening to see people across political stripes, people across the country coming together to help fellow Canadians British Columbians get through a difficult time. I want to commit to those who are in distress today that this government, these 11 men and 11 women will be working as hard as we can to ensure that we get through this crisis and you are back in your homes safe and building a future for your families in this great province. It is, um, it is an honor to be your premier. <laughs> I thought I'd get to the second page, but uh, I wouldn't be here today were it not for my loving family, my beautiful, spectacular, stellar wife, Ellie. My good son, Nate, is not with us today, but my gooder son, Evan, is here. <laughs> to my brother, Pat, my brother, Brian, my sister, Kathy, and here come the tears. I can see them flowing already. I want to thank you for helping me get to this place today and all of you who I've met and known along the way. I believe passionately that all of us are the product of the people that have helped us from day one right up until today. And it's that commitment. I, I'm hopeful that my basketball coach, poor Jack, I keep dragging him out of the closet. Jack, where are you? He's there somewhere. There he is. Sound of the whistle there and back. <laughs> it's people like Jack Lusk who have become a symbol for me of all of the people, many of you in this room today, and people right across this country that have contributed to the development of my character and instilling in me the values that my mom started teaching us when my father passed away many, many years ago, that if you help people today, they will be there to help you tomorrow. If you show respect today, there will be people to show you respect tomorrow. I am forever grateful for those lessons and all of those along the way who have assisted me in maintaining that at the core of my being, that I am only here because of you. I'm only here because of the goodwill of other people I want to instill those values in the government of British Columbia that we get up each and every day to make sure we're making a difference in people's lives, helping them through adversity as we are in the interior today, and making sure that all British Columbians can realize their full potential in the most spectacular place on the planet Earth. It is indeed humbling to have the opportunity to work on behalf of the people of this great province, to deliver the change that people voted for what seems like an eternity ago today. <laughs> Together with the Green Caucus, we will lead a new kind of government, a government that is caring, a government that listens, and a government that shares information in the interest of all British Columbians. <laughs> and, in my, in my brief discussions with Her Honour today, we remarked upon how, regrettably, it's adversity and tragedy, as we're seeing in the interior today, that brings out the true colours of British Columbians, the true colours of Canadians. Although partisanship is never far from our politics, at our core, all of us 
want a better British Columbia. All of us want to work to instill the values that many of us, all of us, in fact, in this room hold so dear. And I believe that this government, these people, will deliver that in the days and weeks and months ahead. Not just today, but every day. My message to British Columbians is this. I will work as hard as I've ever worked before to make sure I live up to the commitments that I made during the election campaign to ensure that we're reducing the costs on people, to ensure that the services that they count on are there for them, and that this great economy works not just for the few, but for everybody. We don't want to leave anyone behind. I task these 11 men and women, 11 men and 11 women, uh, to do everything that they can starting today to ensure that in the areas that they're responsible, we're delivering for the people of British Columbia. Doing everything we can to support communities and emergency responders that are battling wildfires across the interior. Do everything that we can to ensure that kids are ready to go back into classrooms that are adequately funded and that teachers have an opportunity. <laughs> And, and that teachers and school boards and parents have the opportunity to see the power of education to be the great equalizer in our society. I go back to my time at Reynolds High School in this great city of Victoria, and it was the people in that school who saw more in me than I saw in myself. And there are children all across British Columbia that have a story to tell, if only they're given the opportunity to live that story. I want to make sure our public education system, you got that, Rob? Our public education system is delivering on that for families right across British Columbia. Ne next week, I'll be traveling to Ottawa to meet the Prime Minister and later going to Washington, D.C. to ensure that we do something about the opioid crisis here in British Columbia. We have worked as hard as we can, but it hasn't been good enough. We have to redouble our efforts to make sure that the tragedy of overdose deaths does not continue in this great province. And that our that our foundational forest industry has the support of the government of British Columbia and the entire country to ensure that a softwood lumber agreement can be reached so that families in the interior do not have to go home to a burned out community that doesn't have any jobs. We want to make sure those jobs are there, not just today, but for the long term. We're committed to doing that. Now, I know it's getting really hot in here, and. Uh, as many of you know, I could probably go on a little bit longer. <laughs> but I want to make this final commitment to all of you that we do have an extraordinary task ahead of us. There are enormous challenges facing this province, social, economic, and environmental. We are all in this together. Working together, as we have demonstrated with the Green MLAs and working with those Liberal MLAs that want to get on board to make sure we're delivering on the potential and the promise of this great province, I can't wait to get started. I know British Columbia can't wait to get started. We have the team. We have the plan. We're committed to getting it done. You can count on that. Each and every day, we're going to work as hard as we can to realize that great potential. We're ready to get started. Let's go. Thank you very much. So that's it, and it's going to be it for me because I'm about to go on the radio. So if you want to hear more analysis, I'll be on CBC Radio across Metro Vancouver in about two minutes' time. But that should be the and end of the Ladies and gentlemen, now that you've already risen, House, thank you very thank much. You so much for I will invite our soloist to lead us in singing the Queen. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send her victory.
glorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. God save the Queen. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have approximately 10 minute break. If you could kindly help us out and help the movers out by proceeding into the foyer, you could either sign the guest papers there